The elite, those few privileged men who feel it is within their power to hold the world in the palm of their hand. They comprise the heads of what we now call the New World Order. These individuals have a quaint thirst for power, control, and domination. They flaunt their plans within their intellectual circles with an arrogance that the quote have-nots of society do not have the capacity to understand their plans. One of these individuals is famed author and British intelligence officer H.G. Wells. In 1940, he wrote a book conveniently titled The New World Order. In it, he prescribed what the upper echelon of society must do to obtain world peace and keep the common man, quote, satisfied enough to prevent future rebellion. In this video, I've broken down Mr. Wells's thoughts on obtaining the New World Order into nine segments. What is so interesting about these nine segments is that we're seeing them executed at a furious pace just within the last five years. Number one, the leaders, intellectual men. Mr. Wells states, the New World Order cannot be brought into existence without a gigantic and more or less coordinated effort of the saner and abler elements in the human population. The first thing one must understand is that an elite group of men scheming the fate of humanity is not some conspiracy. There is, in fact, a well-coordinated effort of world leaders, businessmen, religious leaders, and philanthropists who are involved in this effort. The now late David Rockefeller has explicitly stated in his memoirs that he stands guilty and is proud of being a part of a secret cabal conspiring with other internationalists for a new world order. Number 2. Depopulation and Elitism Wells says the have-nots have never produced the intelligence and the ability, and the haves have never produced the conscience. Nevertheless, because of the continually increasing efficacy of productive methods, the relative pressure of this new unemployed class increases, and this modernized excess population no longer has any social humility. Let that sink in a moment as he refers to you as, quote, excess population that has never produced the intelligence or ability to lead yourselves. Wells and several other like him feel as though overpopulation is a negative side effect of the enhancements of technology. Unless nations will agree to work together to tackle these cross-border challenges posed by population growth, overconsumption of resources, and environmental degradation, the prospects for a decent life on our planet will be threatened. Number three, abolish borders. We should still be confronted with the essential riddle which is the abolition of boundaries of most existing sovereign states and their merger in some larger packs. We have to do that if any supportable life is to flourish. Do you really think Germany, Sweden, the US, and so many other Western countries are simply making a mistake by having very gratuitous open border policy? Do you really think the open border policy is for human rights? Think again. The uncontrolled open border policy is by design in order to further deconstruct sovereign states. Number four, abolish governments. But many of us are coming to realize that all existing governments have to go into the melting pot. We believe that it is a world revolution which is upon us and that in that great struggle to evoke a westernized world socialism. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And uh, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. This is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. Make no mistake, 
There is a reason governments worldwide are falling to war, civil war, military coups, populist movements, and financial insolvency. It is simply part of the broader plan to deconstruct the current order in order to bring in the new world order. Number five, leave room for nature. Wells states that the world growth is simply devastating the planet and that something must be done to protect the one earth we live on. The elite do love nature and do in fact want to protect it. For why would they want the people they despise to ruin the planet for them? However, they have also used conservation efforts to unite people closer to their global agenda as we've seen with the Paris COP21 conference, the largest agreement with 196 nations signing off. We see this environmental strategy time and time again with the global warming agenda and the obvious Georgia Guidestone statements. Number six, world banking system. Wells states that under the political federation, we have to realize without a concurrent economic collectivization is bound to fail. So it is plain that the federal union, a common money, means an identical economic life throughout the union. Yes, the global stock market, bond, and currency collapse is coming, and it will make way for the one world currency. Although several experts say that this should have happened sometime between 2014 and 2016, I'm seeing more and more conservative voices that are concerned that it will without a doubt happen between 2017 and 2018. Well, with the bubbles that you mentioned, and okay. then we'll go through, through deflation. Do you, when you say we need to reset the world economy, how do you do that? Okay. I think the reset is, is on multiple fronts. Uh, number one, the financial sector. Number seven, re-education. Wells says the distribution of this essential conception one may call propaganda, but in reality, it is education. Wells calls for the youth to be indoctrinated with a new one world order mentality. And sure enough, this is what we're seeing in our public education system, not to mention our extreme liberal colleges. But freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. Number eight, populist movements. Wells says world peace means all that much revolution. More and more of us begin to realize that it cannot mean less. The reorganization of the world has at first to be mainly the work of a quote movement or a party or a religion or cult, whatever we choose to call it. It will not be a close-knit organization, towing on the party line and so forth. It may be a very loose-knit and many-faceted, but if a sufficient number of minds throughout the world, irrespective of race, origin, or economic and social habituations, give in, well then they've met their goal. Sound familiar? Indeed, what Wells is talking about here is the rise of populist movements. Having a left versus right paradigm of large, loose, assimilatory masses of people that are willing to go toe to toe in revolution against one another. And last, but certainly not least, number nine, shock troops of the NWO. Pay very very close attention to what H.G. Wells says in this paragraph. The eager and adventurous unemployed young are indeed the shock troops in the destruction of the old social order everywhere. They will find guidance in some confident party or some inspired champion who organizes them for revolutionary or counter-revolutionary ends. It scarcely matters which. The essence is the combination of energy, frustration, and discontent. So you thought that your first worry would be martial law through the military and police. Think again. The elite want to use the common man against one another. Whether you are on the right or on the left, the elite wants you 
to fight amongst yourselves so they can clean up the rest. And if you've been paying attention in the news, America is falling right into that trap with Americans being divided almost across every social, economic, and political issue. So what are we to do in this situation? To me, the writings of H.G. Wells seem to be very much like a blueprint of what is going on in today's world. Additionally, I feel we are nearing the climax of their efforts. With those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, you'll recognize that there are some extreme parallels with what is happening in our world and that with which is stated in Bible prophecy. My advice to you, get prepared physically by acquiring hard assets and getting in shape. Get prepared mentally by acquiring knowledge of how to be a producer. And most importantly, get prepared spiritually.